Welcome to another deep dive, and this time we're looking at uh, an interesting trio, Kubernetes, Proxmox, and Ceph. You know, for flexible and scalable IT infrastructure, a lot of folks are talking about this combo. I'm really curious to, to kind of unpack it and, and see what all the excitement's about. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely more than just hype. These three technologies, they're each pretty powerful in their own right, mm -hmm. but when you bring them together, they, they really address a growing need. Um, for, for those flexible, scalable, and resilient IT systems that are so important these days. And, and they do it in a way that can be surprisingly cost-effective, which is always a good thing, right? Definitely. So before we dive into the nitty-gritty, maybe we should do a quick recap of what each of these technologies actually does, you know, for, for those who might be new to the party. Sure, absolutely. Let's start with Kubernetes. It's a container orchestration platform. Um, essentially, it's like the conductor of the containerized application world, sure. you know. It manages the deployment, the scaling, the networking of those applications and make sure that everything runs smoothly and efficiently. Okay, so Kubernetes is keeping those application containers in line. What about Proxmox? Where does that fit into this picture? Well, Proxmox is kind of our virtualization maestro. It's a platform for managing both physical and virtual servers. Mm -hmm. um, it creates that underlying environment for everything to run. So think of it as like the stage manager. It sets up the stage for the Kubernetes performance. Got it. And then we have Ceph, which is uh, all about storage, right? Yes. Ceph is our storage powerhouse. Yeah. But it's not just any storage. It's a distributed storage system. It's known for its reliability and scalability. So it spreads data across multiple devices. So even if one fails, the system keeps humming along. No problem. Okay. So Ceph is making sure the data is safe and sound. So we've got our conductor, our stage manager, and our uh, data guardian. But what makes this particular combination so special? Why is it gaining so much traction right now? Well, I think one of the biggest drivers is this increasing demand for flexible IT systems. Businesses, they need to be able to adapt quickly. You know, changing market conditions, deploying new applications rapidly, scaling resources up or down as needed. And this trifecta really delivers on that need for agility. So it's like having a, a shape-shifting IT infrastructure that can kind of mold itself to fit any situation. Exactly. And, and this flexibility goes hand in hand with scalability. As your business grows, your IT infrastructure needs to keep pace, mm. right? Well, Ceph, with its distributed nature, can scale seamlessly. You can just add more storage nodes as you need them, and the system expands. No disruption. It's like having an elastic data center that expands and contracts to kind of accommodate your changing needs. Yeah, exactly. And then we can't forget about resilience. Downtime is just not an option. Ceph, with its self-healing capabilities and data replication, ensures high availability. So even if a server fails or a storage device bites the dust, your data is still safe and accessible. So Ceph is not just storing the data, it's actively protecting it. Now, all of this sounds great in theory, but can you give us some real-world examples of how these benefits actually translate into, you know, tangible business value? Sure, absolutely. Let's say you're a company developing a new mobile app. With this setup, you can spin up a development environment in minutes, test your app on different configurations, and then seamlessly scale up to handle, like, millions of users when you launch. That's impressive. It's like having a, a turbocharged development process. Yeah. Or imagine you're a financial institution dealing with sensitive customer data. This combination provides a highly secure and resilient platform. Make sure your data is always protected and accessible, even if there's a hardware failure or a cyber attack. It's like Fort Knox for your data. Multiple layers of security and redundancy. Exactly. And, and honestly, this is just scratching the surface. We're seeing organizations across all sorts of industries leverage this combination to be more agile, more efficient, and to save money. Okay, so we've established that this Kubernetes, Proxmox, and Ceph trio, it's got some serious advantages. But I imagine setting up and managing this kind of infrastructure can be a bit complex. Where do you even start? Well, it, it does involve a few steps, mm. but you can break it down into manageable stages. And fortunately, there are some really good resources and tools available to help you along the way. Okay, good to know. So let's walk through those stages then. What's the first step in building this, uh, this powerhouse of technologies? All right, so the foundation of this whole setup is a Proxmox cluster. This involves joining several Proxmox servers together. It creates this robust and resilient platform for your virtual machines and containers. So it's like laying the groundwork for everything else to be built on top of. Exactly. And when you're building this Proxmox foundation, high-speed networking is super important. You want at least 10 gigabits per second, if not faster. That ensures smooth communication between those Proxmox nodes, especially for CES data traffic. So we're talking a serious need for speed. Definitely. 
Next, you deploy Ceph on top of that Proxmox cluster. This is where you configure Ceph to be the unified storage backend for both Proxmox and Kubernetes. So it's like setting up the storage infrastructure that everything else will rely on. Exactly. Now, deploying Ceph involves setting up a few key components. You'll have Ceph OSDs. These are responsible for storing the actual data. Okay, so the OSDs are where the data lives. Right. And then you'll have Ceph Monitor and Manager Nodes. These are responsible for keeping the Ceph cluster healthy and making sure everything runs smoothly. So they're like the overseers of the storage system. Exactly. Once you have Ceph up and running, it's time for the main event, integrating Kubernetes with Ceph. Ah, this is where we bring all the pieces together. Precisely. And the key to this integration is the Ceph CSI driver. Have you heard of this? We touched on it briefly earlier, but I'd love to hear more about what it actually does. Sure. The Ceph CSI driver is like a translator. It allows Kubernetes to talk to Ceph, requesting and managing storage on demand. So it's like the bridge between the two worlds. Exactly. With the Ceph CSI driver in place, Kubernetes can dynamically provision storage from Ceph whenever a container needs it, and it can manage that storage throughout the container's lifecycle. So it's like having a self-service storage system for Kubernetes. Precisely. And to make this even more efficient, we use storage classes within Kubernetes. These are predefined templates that specify the type of storage, the performance level, the replication factor, you name it. So it's like having a menu of storage options for Kubernetes to choose from. Yeah, a great analogy. So when a container needs storage, Kubernetes just looks at the storage class and knows exactly what to provision from Ceph. It's like ordering off a menu. I'll have the high-performance storage with extra replication, please. Exactly. And this combination of this FCSI driver and storage classes makes managing storage in Kubernetes super efficient and scalable. This is really helpful in understanding how all these pieces fit together. We've gone from individual technologies to like a, a well-oiled machine. Yeah, it's all about the integration. But setting up the infrastructure is just the first step. We also need to talk about keeping this whole system running smoothly. You know, monitoring, maintenance, that kind of thing. Right, because even the best bands need a good roadie. Absolutely. Okay, so we've built our infrastructure, we've got all the pieces in place, but now we need to make sure this whole thing runs smoothly, right? I'm talking about monitoring and maintenance. Like, uh, what do we need to keep an eye on? Yeah, monitoring is, is really essential with this kind of setup. You need to have a good understanding of how all the components are performing, both individually and as a whole system. So what kind of tools can we use for that? I mean, are we talking about like spreadsheets and charts or something? Luckily, no spreadsheets required. Mm -hmm. There's some some great open source tools out there. Uh, one that comes to mind is Prometheus. It's a fantastic time series database, and it can collect metrics from all the different parts of your infrastructure, mm -hmm. from Kubernetes to Proxmox to Ceph. It gets everything. Okay, that sounds pretty comprehensive, but then how do we actually make sense of all that data? I mean, I'm not a data scientist. Is there a way to visualize it? Yeah, definitely. There's another tool called Grafana. It's a visualization tool that can create dashboards and alerts based on all the data Prometheus collects. So you can see at a glance how your CPU usage is trending, how much storage you're using, and if any components are having issues. Ah, so Grafana is like our our visual command center. Yeah, exactly. And the cool thing is you can set up alerts in Grafana so you get notified immediately if anything goes wrong. Okay, so we're not just reacting to problems, we're preventing them. Now, what about Ceph specifically? Are there any like key things we should be monitoring there? Yeah, good question. With Ceph, you definitely want to keep a close eye on the health of your OSDs. Those are the, the workhorses that store your data, remember? Right, the OSDs. Make sure they're functioning correctly and that they're replicating data as they should be. You also want to monitor the overall health of the Ceph cluster, you know, things like storage capacity, network throughput, and watch out for any performance bottlenecks. Okay, so lots to keep an eye on, but it sounds like the tools are there to make it manageable. Now, you mentioned earlier that Ceph is not a one-trick pony. It's not limited to just one type of storage. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Ceph offers both block storage and shared file systems. Yeah. So it's really versatile. You know, it can handle all sorts of different applications and workloads. Okay, so give me some examples. When would you use one type of storage versus the other? Sure, so block storage, that's perfect for applications that need really high performance and low latency. Things like databases, it provides like a dedicated express lane for data access. So if speed is critical, block storage is the way to go. Exactly. 
Shared file systems, on the other hand, are great for scenarios where you have multiple applications or users that need to access the same files at the same time. Okay, so like a collaborative work environment. Exactly. Or if you have applications that generate huge amounts of data that needs to be shared, like media files or scientific data sets. Got it. So Ceph really can handle a wide range of use cases, but I'm still a little fuzzy on how it actually works with Kubernetes. I mean, we talked about the Ceph CSI driver, but how does that all play out in a real world scenario? Okay, so imagine you have a pod in Kubernetes. That's the smallest deployable unit. It's basically a group of one or more containers. And let's say this pod needs persistent storage, meaning that the data needs to stick around even if the pod is terminated or restarted. Okay, I'm following. So this pod, it sends a request for storage to Kubernetes. It says, hey, I need this much storage and it needs to have these specifications. And Kubernetes, using the Ceph CSI driver, talks to Ceph and says, hey, Ceph, can you provide this storage? So Kubernetes is placing the order and Ceph is fulfilling it. Exactly. Ceph then dynamically provisions that storage. It carves out a portion of its storage pool just for this pod. And once the storage is ready, Kubernetes mounts it to the pod, making it available to the application inside. So it's all very automated. Kubernetes says, I need this, and Ceph makes it happen. Exactly. And it all happens thanks to that Ceph CSI driver. But how does Kubernetes know what kind of storage to provision in the first place? That's where storage classes come in, right? Those predefined templates we talked about earlier. You got it. Storage classes, they define everything, the type of storage, the performance level, the replication factor. Yeah. So when a pod needs storage, it just says, hey, I need storage from this storage class. And Kubernetes handles the rest. So it's like a shortcut. Kubernetes doesn't have to figure out all the details every time. It just looks at the storage class and knows what to do. Exactly. Storage classes really simplify the whole process of managing storage for Kubernetes applications. Okay, so we've got all the pieces of the puzzle. Kubernetes, Proxmox, Ceph, the CSI driver, storage classes. But let's zoom out for a second. Why Ceph? Why not just use any storage system? What are the specific advantages of using Ceph in this scenario? Well, as we've talked about, Ceph's distributed nature makes it super resilient and scalable. But within Kubernetes, it offers some really specific benefits. For example, dynamic volume provisioning. Ceph can create and provide storage on the fly, which makes it a perfect match for Kubernetes, where containers are constantly being created and destroyed. So it's very adaptable. Exactly. And then there's persistent volumes. We need to make sure that data sticks around even if a pod is terminated or restarted. Ceph is great at providing that persistent storage. It's essential for stateful applications like databases. Okay, so Ceph is not just about storing data. It's about making sure that data is always available no matter what happens to the pods. Exactly. And of course, scalability is huge. As your Kubernetes cluster grows, you can just add more storage nodes to your Ceph cluster. No problem. So we can scale the storage right alongside the applications. Precisely. Ceph can handle massive amounts of data across multiple nodes. It delivers both high performance and high availability. This has been really helpful in breaking down how all of these technologies work together. It's clear that this combination is powerful, but I'm curious, what's the, like, the so what? Why should people care about this? What impact does it have in the real world? That's a great question. And that's what we're gonna explore next. We'll talk about why this technology matters and how it's actually being used to solve real world problems. Okay, sounds good, I'm looking forward to it. All right, so we've spent a lot of time diving deep into Kubernetes, Proxmox, and Ceph. We've seen how they work individually, how they fit together. We've even touched on monitoring and maintenance, but now I wanna talk about the, the bigger picture. Why should businesses, organizations, why should they care about this combination? What makes it so special? Yeah, that's the, the key question, right? And the answer, it's not just about the, the tech specs. It's really about a fundamental shift in, in how we think about IT infrastructure. You know, it's about agility, efficiency, adaptability. Those qualities are more important than ever. So it's not just about keeping up with the latest trends. It's about like gaining a real competitive edge. Can you give us some some concrete examples of of how this translates into like real business value? Sure. Let's say you're a, a fast growing e-commerce company. You need an infrastructure that can handle huge spikes in traffic, you know, yeah. during the holidays, big sales events. Well, this combination, it lets you scale your resources up and down on demand. So you can make sure you're providing a seamless customer experience, even when things get crazy. So no more website crashes during Black Friday. That's a big win for everyone. Exactly. And this flexibility, it goes beyond just scaling resources. It also means that companies can roll out new features, updates much faster. 
keep up with customer demands, you know, yeah. stay ahead of the competition. In today's world, speed and agility, those are the, the real differentiators. It's like having a, a high performance engine that can adapt to any road conditions. And it's not just about speed, it's also about efficiency. By automating a lot of those, those IT management tasks, businesses can free up time and resources. You know, focus on the things that matter most. Innovation, product development, happy customers. So it's like streamlining operations to make everything run smoother. Exactly. And let's not forget about cost. This combination, it often relies on open source technologies, which can save you a ton of money compared to those, those traditional proprietary solutions. Right. So you're getting all these benefits without breaking the bank. It's a win-win. So it's clear that this, uh, this trio has a lot to offer modern businesses. But uh, what about the future? What trends are you seeing emerging in this space? Well, one area that's really exciting is edge computing. Now, just to clarify for our listeners, edge computing is about bringing data processing and storage closer to the source of the data. Think of like smart devices, sensors, IoT applications, that kind of thing. Exactly. And this Kubernetes, Proxmox, Ceph stack, it's a really good fit for those edge deployments. Kubernetes can orchestrate containers at the edge, Proxmox can manage the infrastructure, and Ceph provides that resilient, scalable storage you need for all that edge data. So it's like having a mini data center right where the action is, mm -hmm. which allows for real-time processing, decision-making, all that. Exactly. Think of like self-driving cars that can make decisions in a split second based on data from their surroundings or smart factories that optimize their processes in real time based on sensor data. Edge computing has the potential to revolutionize so many industries and this combination can provide that that solid foundation they need. It's pretty amazing to think about all the possibilities. Now, besides edge computing, what else is on the horizon? Any other future trends you're keeping an eye on? Yeah, another one to watch is the the convergence of this technology stack with AI and machine learning. AI and ML are already having a huge impact on, on pretty much every aspect of our lives. And they require a lot of computing power and storage. This Kubernetes, Proxmox, Ceph combo, it can handle it. You know, yeah. It can provide the infrastructure you need to train and deploy those complex AI and ML models. So we're talking about like, AI-powered medical diagnosis tools, personalized learning platforms, things like that. Exactly. As these technologies evolve and converge, we're going to see a, a whole new wave of innovation. It's an exciting time to be in tech. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what would you say is the, the most important takeaway for our listeners? I think it's this. This isn't just about technology. It's about a, a new way of thinking. It's about being agile, resilient, always evolving. It's about embracing change and using these powerful tools to build a better future. Well said. This has been a fantastic deep dive. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey into the world of cutting edge IT infrastructure. It's been my pleasure. And to our listeners, keep exploring, keep learning, keep asking questions. The world of technology is constantly evolving and we're all in this together. Thanks for tuning in.